All right, today is the day. And if you found this video and want to see the building of a seat for a supercar, that's what this video is about. This is a little bit of an in-depth video on the fabrication of that seat from the mold that we produced. At the end of this video, I will put up a card over here in this corner that will take you to a video showing you the actual building of the mold that we're gonna be using here in the production of this seat. Anyway, stay to the end and catch that video. But anyway, let's watch building the seats. Well, now that we have our mold ready to go, we're going to get it prepped and ready to start doing some laminations. I'm here, of course, going back to the tried and true method of waxing the mold um, three or four times. And of course, after you've done a couple of parts for the first times, always wax it a few times between until it's kind of well seasoned, I guess they would say. And then PVA releasing agent. And once that thing's prepped, we're ready to now start a get ready to a vacuum infusion. So we're putting the vacuum tape or just a sticky tack tape. People call it lots of different things. But it's just a very gummy sticky tape with a pill on the backside or a peel ply on the backside so that you can keep it covered and while you're working around it. And now we're also going to take off a little bit of that uh, peel and stick on a couple pieces of tape to make some pleats. This will make it so that we can put some wrinkles in the bag, make the bag a little more expansive so that when it starts to suck down, it can go down to the recesses, areas like that headrest. Now again, I made a little uh, paper template to be able to cut my carbon and glass pieces of fabric to size. And of course, always when you're going to do this, cut them a little bit bigger as well, especially if you don't want any kind of seams to show if you're doing a carbon surface. Now I've got a problem in that I'm going to be doing this uh, forged carbon look and I can't just drop these uh, chopped pieces of carbon fiber onto the mold. Of course, it's as slippery and slidey as this with the wax and the smooth surface, everything is just going to slide off down the hills. So I have uh, come up with this idea that I will just take this piece of a carbon fiber cloth, spray some uh, adhesive onto it, and then just stick the fibers onto it, kind of make a little carbon fiber shag carpet. That way I can turn it over and just lay it into the mold. Going to do the same thing and create a little piece for the headrest. That's a kind of a little extension on this whole thing. So just making it up separate. One thing that's going to be the beauty of working with this uh, forged carbon look is that we don't have to worry about those perfect edge seams and uh, putting a fray stop on there to get the edge to be nice and tight. Same thing, just to spray on some adhesive stick our little chopped carbon fiber on there and get ready to start placing the mold. Now there are some seams and just so to make sure that the carbon fiber cloth doesn't poke through into our forged look, I throw a few little extra loose fibers into the corners and stick our fabric in there. Then bring our big blanket over, our shag carpet, place it where it's going to be and of course like I mentioned, I make sure you cut these things oversize and then trim them in place in the mold. Now we left that uh, peel ply on the tape so that the little pieces of fiber don't fall off and get stuck in the gum, which would ruin the vacuum bag seal. We're just gonna go around and trim it back so that it doesn't cover that tape. And then, uh, get a vacuum out and clean up all those loose fibers so that when we do pull off that little uh, peel ply on that tape, it does not get fiber stuck in it. Now we're gonna put two layers of fiberglass to back this thing up. So it's just gonna be the same process, lay our uh, next two layers on, trim them back so that they clear our gum tape. And we'll get these things cut little pleats or uh, releases where you need to, like in this headrest area, it's kind of a deep pocket. So we have to cut some pleats in there to get it to drop down in there. Some little nips and tucks as it goes around the bend, just to make sure it doesn't pull tight and trim back like we talked about before, so that it does not stick on our tape. Got to keep that clear for the vacuum bag to go on. Now we're ready for getting the infusion flow media 
the peel ply and the bag material together. We've got our laminations in place, the carbon fiber and the fiberglass, so now it's ready to get the bag. First layer it's going to go on is a peel ply. Now this is just a nylon cloth that is uh, permeable to the resin. The resin can go right through it, but it has this amazing ability that it does not bond to the resin, so you can just tear it right off the composites when you're done and have a nice finished surface. Also keeps the infusion media we're about to put on from sticking to the epoxy. Now this uh, infusion or flow media is just a plastic mesh that allows the resin once it enters the bag to move up across the whole lamination. So we've got to prep it just like the other fiberglass cloth. Make sure it gets the ability to press down into that like headrest area. So we cut a little nips in it. Now bring my wife out to help me get this bag in place. Uh, they're kind of slippery and uh, keeps sliding off. So she can help me hold it in place while I'm doing some things like putting in this first vacuum port here on the bottom end. And I'm going to use four ports in total, two on each side of the low at the low side. This will be the intake or the suction port. And then on the high side on each side, we'll have the vacuum or the draw ports. Now as we're uh, putting this bag on, it's a matter of working around. I just clipped out a little piece of the flow media because I'm going to put this vacuum port on here. If you have the port sitting on top of the flow media, the resin will just go in one port right out the other one. So you want it to slow down when it gets close to that port. So you take the mesh away from there. Now we're putting in a, a feed line. This is just a piece of polyethylene tubing that has a spiral cut all the way around it. And this is where the Resin, when it comes into the first port, will just flow through this tube and then hit the flow media, the mesh, and start to travel into the whole lamination. Our bag was a little short on the seat side, so we're just going to add some more gum taper right to the bag. Easily just extend out your bag if you need a bigger bag. And then as we bring the second piece of plastic over, you just peel the peel ply off of the tape stick it on there try to keep no wrinkles to be a leak later on now we're ready to add our next port on that side and some more uh, feed lines inside you'll see that feed line goes down and then the port sits right on top of it that suction side port then it's a matter of uh, peeling back our peel ply on the tape and starting to stick that bag down and now we're getting pretty close to having all the materials in place. So it's just a matter of going round and round and checking all the wrinkles that might come across the sticky tape. Make sure that there's no wrinkles that are open that might cause a vacuum leak. Get it the best you can because as soon as we turn on the vacuum pump, it'll be a, another search to make sure we go around and check for anything that might be leaking. When you have the vacuum on, sometimes they will hiss or make um, some noise that you can trace that way. But we bring out our vacuum lines. We have a little catch pot so that when the resin flows in and it comes to the, the suction ports, it, if it gets in that line, it won't go into my vacuum pump. It'll drop into that pot first. But we've cut that piece of tubing off at an angle so that when you stick it in the port, it doesn't go in and... Uh, butt up against the mold itself and stop suction there. But now we've got the suction lines in, or I should, the vacuum side. And now these are the big um, port lines that we will stick into our resin to draw it into the bag, clamp them off, and then turn our vacuum on. You see the bag starts to collapse and go in. We're gonna just chase around it pull the fabric into the places that are low in the mold so that they don't um, get the bag stretching tight across there. We want it to be as loose as we can in the center, so we just kind of keep moving the bag around. Sometimes you have to release the vacuum, move the bag a little bit, turn the vacuum back on. After a while, it gets placed in a good place, and we're just going to go around check it. Now it's time to open the ports with some the end of the line in the resin. And it starts to uh, immediately suction in. 
resin follows the feed lines, it goes around the bend. You can see it's kind of making its way around the corners. Here's the seat side a little later. It's traveling really well. I do have a little vacuum leak somewhere there. Get some air bubbles in a line. Now we're watching this thing, but we're noticing that uh, the flow is slowing down on the back side of that seat. And we're uh, questioning whether it's going to be able to make it to the suction side ports before that resin starts to thicken up. Now this is a point where you have to really decide what you're going to do because there is a way to save this thing if it doesn't make it, possibly. But I'm here deciding that I don't think it's going to make it. The resin in the pot's starting to get a little warmer and it's not going to make it. Now, I think the problem was or could have been solved by using one of these uh, flow lines that it would have been laid across the back of the chair on top of the flow media and that would allow the resin to flow across that in the center line instead of around the outside edges. But what happens is the, the fiberglass cloths leave air gaps that this resin can flow along. But I think with all that chopped fiber, when the vacuum compressed that chopped fiber, it just did not leave a flow path. And so it's just not going to make it in the time it needs to. So we're going to have to abandon this thing and try to save it. So we're just going to rip off all the vacuum bagging materials. And I decided just to take the two layers of fiberglass cloth off as well. And I'm hoping that with all the stuff out of the way, I have enough time to just mix up a batch of fresh resin, get a brush, a squeegee, and try to sweep it in there, wipe it on, press it in to that area that was starved for resin in the infusion, but it was a fail. And you can see here the dry fibers that just didn't get some resin in a couple of areas there. So we're going to start over, go to the old tried and true method of the wet layup. So to keep the fibers from just sliding out of the mold this time, I have to put some resin on the surface of the mold and then just start dropping the fibers on, pressing them into the resin, kind of trying to get them saturated. A little bit of problem that they stick to your brush. But the best thing to do is just to put as many fibers on as you can. Make sure there's no green showing through. You keep adding fibers. So this takes a little while, I've discovered, and so what I had to do was just add the backup carbon, the cloth that I'm using to back all this up. I just cut it into the narrower strips, mix smaller batches of resin, put the chopped fibers on, get them saturated, and then put that strip of carbon fiber cloth on the backside, like I said, in smaller stages and keep working with smaller batches of resin. Until finally I got the whole thing covered. And then uh, just bring out some fiberglass cloth, put a couple layers on to back this whole thing up let it rest cured the next day i need to build some structure on this chair to make it actually fit in the car one of the things is that it needs to be a have a base and a system to bolt it to the car so i created this little cavity in there with some poly sheeting and stuck the car or stuck the chair into some expanding foam trim that foam up sanded it down now i'm going to uh cover it with a Microsphere slurry, give us a good hard coating surface to do our fiberglass lamination on. Now this, uh, put the first layers on as thin as I can to get it to fill all the voids in the foam. But when I switch it around, there's a couple of places there you see like a air pocket. I thickened up some Microsphere slurry to a putty and filled those up. But here I'm also building some core runners that are going to stiffen up the back of this chair. Now the, the back of the chair sits up against the bulkhead, not, not tightly. It's only going to be fastened to the floor, but we want the chair to be able to flex a little bit, but not so much that it's uh, bouncing back and forth. So we're going to put these runners on to stiffen the back of the chair up, put them on now. And then once they are cured with this fiberglass cloth that's holding them in place, We'll go back and sand this whole assembly, our slurry, and the fiberglass cloth we've put on on those runners. You see, I've also took some slurry putty and uh, fared out those runners, make a nice smooth transition as the cloth goes over them. But we'll get this all sanded up the 
at least the high spots all knocked down. Now, part of this lamination, I'm going to be covering up some uh, fasteners, three bolts that are going to hook this thing to the floor. Just some five minute epoxy to get the large surface of these large flange bolts. Epoxy them on. Not too long later, they're cured, ready to start putting our fiberglass lamination on this thing. We're going to put about three layers of fiberglass on here to uh, make this thing a good solid structure. And on the backside between those runners, we're going to put some real heavy uh, unidirectional fabrics, build that up nice and thick. Like so we want this chair to uh, be stiff enough to support us, but just a flexible enough to bounce just a little bit. So you're not always taking so much jostle from the road. And then add our uh, fiberglass cloth layers over that couple layers we'll be putting on here a good twill fabric that conforms to all these uh, pretty compound surfaces especially when it gets down into that headrest some deep pockets in there and once we turn this thing around and start laminating the bottom side we have to allow for those bolts to be covered up and so when you uh Trying to do that, the of course, is pretty simple. You just lay your fabric on, and as you stretch it across, nip a little hole in there with them, sharp scissors. Sharp scissors? Yep. And then just laminate around them. And uh, extra reinforcement's going to be added to each of those bolts. So you cut a piece of patch material, I call it, and just a concentric fabric that's a little bit wider each time it goes out. So between the size of the flange on the bolt and how many layers of fiberglass is how much strength you'll have on a, the pole strength on a bolt like that. And we'll just keep working our layers on. I won't show you the whole process of all those layers, but I'm going to skip to this, which is uh, when you get in the car, there's going to be a side of the seat that you can actually see the edge for. So we're going to add some carbon fiber cloth onto those areas. Laminate that on as best we can, a nice, uh, pretty cover layer that will be kind of a decorative or a visual aspect of the chair on the sides. Once that's cured the next day, you're going to trim this thing up and it'll be ready to finish by sanding and spraying a clear coat on. But we're going to go test it in the car now. But when you ha have a chair like this, you can't get to the bolts. The only way to find it is you put the seat in the car, slide a couple of uh, sticks of some kind, three of them, up against the bolts that you can't see, but you can slide these sticks in against them. And then when you lift the chair out, very carefully, you'll have the bolt hole located. So just mark that and drill that first front hole out. And we're going to stick the chair back in and then put sticks in for the back holes. Dropped in the holes, there it is. And ready for finishing and upholstery in another video.